experience as they work through stage one, framing the research question. For this demo, I've chosen to look at the language spell, language A. Now the first thing is it lets me choose what step I'm at. I can either skip ahead or I can start at the start. So I'm going to start with looking at the type of essay and the broad topic area. The first thing it tells me is that my topic needs to have two components, a primary text and a wider context. I can choose to click here and get further examples if I need them. It then lets me choose which category of essays I'm interested in working through and get guidance for that category. So now it's guiding me through thinking about which wider context that I care about. And I put down some thoughts here of why I'd like to explore this context. As you can see, I'm being guided in a step-by-step -step fashion to look at all of the different things that I'm interested in exploring, and I can keep adding these in. Once I'm done adding in my text and context, they all show up right here, and I can prioritize these to see which ones I'm most passionate about and would like to pursue. So it's captured all the information I have. It's great not just for my own thinking through of it, but also for the RRS to eventually capture the journey I've been on as I come to my research question. So now it's giving me the approach to understanding this wider context. If I need some search tips, I can just click here and it helps me with some sources I should look at, as well as some ways in which I can organize my keywords for research. There's also the Calibre research tool and there's a separate video explaining how that works. But that's incredibly useful, helping, helping students document all their sources as they look through their research. Again, once I've done this, it lets me pull out some passages and quotes from the text that are relevant to this chosen context. And there are all these examples to help out. Finally, I come to a topic and possible sources over here before I then move forward to looking at can this topic be converted to a research question? So here's a checklist of things which must be met before it can convert to a research question. Now the student is guided through how to convert an interesting topic into a research question which meets these parameters of being relevant, practical, and having a manageable scope. I can read these sheets to understand more about how these parameters work, and get some more guidance on how these apply to my research question. Finally, this at the end is a checkpoint where I fill out my own research question, and that is then emailed to me and available to the supervisor as well to understand the process I've been through and the question I've arrived at at the end and how I've gotten there. Before I finalize my research question, it helps me evaluate the research question. So again, I've got a checklist here, and I can put down my thoughts and comments over here for discussion with the supervisor. But it runs me through some essential points like, can the question be answered with a simple yes or no? Um, does it require further research? And as I choose any of these options, it will give me some feedback to help me improve upon my research question. So as a student, once I come to my research question, it also helps me evaluate if that's a research question which meets the requirements to move forward with it for an extended essay. And at every stage, I keep putting in my responses and thoughts here, and all of that is available to become part of my research process as well as sharing it with my supervisor. Until at the end, this is the checkpoint document where I'm going to enter my research question, the classification for it, and the list of sources I'm interested in. And this will finally be emailed to me. And also, it's something I take to my meeting with the supervisor. So the supervisor sees a well-developed research question after I have gone through all of this thought and analysis and evaluation on my end.